MacBook Air has been out for a few months now and it is great for programming. This is why I wanted to make a video showing you how I usually set up my MacBook for programming. As usual, the first steps to setting up any MacBook involves going through the initial steps of connecting to a network and logging into your Apple account as well as some other basic steps. Once the initial setup is done, I first like to clean up the dock by removing apps I don't often use such as contacts, maps, and photos for example. I then go straight to download my favorite browser Google Chrome. With the browser installed, I would also recommend installing some extensions that might be useful depending on what type of programming you will be doing. I also like to have some extensions to limit the time I spend on certain websites to avoid procrastination. The next thing you want to do as a programmer is change the theme of the terminal so it looks like you're coding the matrix. To do this, open your terminal, go to preferences and under profile set homebrew as your default. All jokes aside, if you don't like the default theme of the terminal, I would recommend changing it or customizing it to one that you like. The default terminal gives you the option to change things such as background color, font size, and more. Before we get into installing package managers, you should first open the terminal and type in git to install the command line developer tools. This will allow you to compile programs and debug them, convert files, and perform a number of tasks for handling the resources required for making applications and other tools. Once your developer tools are installed, I would recommend installing Homebrew so you can use it as your package manager. To install it, head to brew.sh, then copy the installation command and paste it into your macOS terminal. As it runs, the script explains what it will do and then pauses before it does it. Make sure to read the instructions once the installation is done, as you will need to run two more commands in your terminal to add homebrew to your path. If you don't do this, the brew command will not work. If you're a web developer or do any sort of front-end work, you will probably want to install VS Code. Once you install VS Code, you can select one of the default themes or get one from a website such as vscodethemes.com. If you didn't know, VS Code includes a full integrated terminal that you can access from the menu bar commands. This is very useful so I recommend you enable it. I also recommend you enable bracket colorization under preferences, settings, and then search for bracket pair. This makes it very easy to view bracket pairs. VS Code also has many great extensions so I recommend you go through some of them or you can look online for recommendations based on what type of programming language you are going to use. When it comes to Python, I normally use Anaconda to manage Python environments. With the Anaconda app, you can easily create new Python environments and manage packages as needed. If you're an iOS developer, installing Xcode will probably be the first step for you. Xcode is Apple's IDE used to develop software for pretty much all of Apple operating systems. To download it, simply head to the App Store on your MacBook and search for Xcode. It can be installed like any other regular app. Note that it can take some time to install, so please be patient. When it comes to backend work, IntelliJ is my go-to IDE and this is the one I use for work on a day-to-day -day basis. For personal work, I use the community edition of IntelliJ, but if you work for a company then they might have a license for the ultimate edition. In particular, I really like the debugging capabilities of IntelliJ. Last but not least, 
I usually like to install a lightweight text editor such as Sublime so that I can use for basic tasks such as inspecting queries and JSON. These are the programs I usually install when first setting up my MacBook for programming use. Is there anything else you would add to the list? Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.